another vlog. I hope you all don't mind. I know it's kind of soon, but I really haven't been feeling all of that well lately. And I just find that these type of videos are a little bit easier, easier to do as well as the shorts but those are really simple to do and the vlogs are simple to do because you just come as you are and you start talking but anyway i am currently leaving my parents house and my parents live about 30 minutes away from me they live in Mo City. But anyway, I'm gonna mosey on down the, down the road and I will see you all in the next clip. Hey guys, I am back and today we're on our way to Willie G's Seafood. It's a restaurant out there by the Galleria and if I'm not mistaken, the exit that you take off of 610 is San Felipe. So it's out that way. I've never been. My father is taking me and my sister. Well, he offered, he offered to take everybody, but I'm going uh, my middle sister and her son and my mom and, and my mom and dad. And it's to celebrate my 51st birthday. I'm going to be 51 years old on September 1st. I don't know when this video is going to go up, so... Happy birthday to myself. My dad asked me if turning 51, are you feeling any different? I'm like, no. Still feeling the same. Same old, same old, same old. I could be feeling better if I took better care of myself. Uh, the past couple weeks have like been really, really hard on me. Hold on. Lipstick. I feel like I got lipstick on my teeth. Oh my goodness, what is this? Can you get on the HOV up there? I don't know why I didn't tell you to get on that. It's always some some crazy stuff going on right here. Anyway, um, yeah, so he offered to take everybody. No, I was talking about how it feels to be 51 and taking better care of myself. We ain't gonna make it. Not in 10 minutes. What you doing? Uh uh, don't, don't. You ain't gonna try to hop out from her. Not if you got it in regular mode. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this past couple weeks have been really hard on me. I've been having some really bad pain with my hip and my leg horrible horrible just lay awake at night almost in tears the pain is so bad so that's why i really haven't been doing many videos i'll do some shorts here and there but it's gonna be raining what we're going to look like it's gonna be pouring down um that's why i've been doing shorts today i'm feeling better because yesterday i went and got a steroid shot in my hip so while I can still feel, look at what is what's the deal with the tripping? So while I still can feel a little something, it's not the pain isn't so bad to where I'm in tears. So I have some appointments scheduled to see some specialists uh, to see, you know. But I I have to I do believe that some of that is due to my diet. There was one week where. For lunch every day, I had Frito pie, um, which consists of chili, a whole, a whole bunch of chili, sour cream, and Fritos. Okay, and after I ate that, I had a big bowl of ice cream with cake. And so that could have been just my body breaking down because initially, look at this, look at this a mess. Initially, uh, when I was first uh, like diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, um, that was one thing that I noticed. Like if my diet was really, really poor, the um, yeah, it, it's I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get back with y'all later. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I thought I had to get off to kind of help my driver because 
you know, I like to drive over here, but I think you got it over here control. And, uh, <laughs> Okay, I can have anything in the picture. Because we're on the HOV lane, and people are coming out of the main highway, like out the main freeway. To, they're not supposed to jump over through here, and they were doing that because the weather is, uh, it don't look like it's bad right now. It looks like it's just rain, but it might be worse than that up ahead. Huh? I think it's certain spots. I mean, it's not. Yeah, I think so too. Probably just a certain spot. But yeah, back on diet, um, I'm thinking that that is some of what my problem was because I don't eat like that. Like Frito pie, like a big bowl. I had it because my husband made some chili and it was good. And I had it Frito pie and sour cream. And then after that, I had a big old bowl of ice cream and cake because my daughter just had, she just turned 20. So we had a cake for her and I, you know, I had to help her finish that off. So, but anyway. So I'm gonna, uh, you know, kind of remedy that. Yeah, tell me. Tell me. So, so now we're hitting rain pockets. Is that what that was? I mean, wait, stop the car, stop the car. Get there, it's like sun up there. Yeah, but even the sun, even though the sun is raining, I don't think. I wonder if they can hear me over the rain. Okay, I'm gonna check out again because I don't. I'm not sure if y'all can hear me over the way. Hello, chocolate wall, simple minds want it all. Take it off, five o'clock. clip of the outside of the restaurant but I ended up having the seafood platter and my sister got uh, a oysters Rockefeller which was really good the oysters were baked and my mom got salmon and um, a baked potato my father got catfish and uh, let's see my husband got a double meat hamburger and it was really good. All of us were really good. My husband really liked the fries. I like the fries too. And with their fries, they have the onion rings, like little slithers of the onion ring um, attached or included in the fries, which were really, really good. Super, super good. So now we're on our way back to the house. Um, when we ballet, got back in the car we could have we could smell everybody's cologne well mainly smell my husband's cologne and it is so good it smells so good so good when before we left the house after he sprayed his cologne when i walked past where he sprayed i was immediately turned off do y'all have ladies out there and even guys i don't know if guys even watch me but do you all have a fragrance or a cologne that when your husband puts on you're immediately it's like an instant aphrodisiac. Anyway, I like the uh, Sauvage by Dior. That stuff smells so good. So, 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 so good. And it doesn't even have to like be sitting on him for a while to like mix in with his, his pheromones or anything like that. It's just so, so good. I didn't understand that. My husband has a nosy phone. Did you hear that? <laughs> A nosy phone. Speaking of aphrodisiacs, 
I have fried oysters on my uh, included in my platter, and I ate some oysters, and I even gave my husband some oysters. So we're gonna have fun tonight, huh? <laughs> I know y'all probably like, girl, that is too much business. That's too, that's TMI. That's too much info. <laughs> That is, I know, my sister's like, I only want to look, I don't even want to hear that. My sister's like that when it comes to intimate issues. I can't, I can't discuss intimate issues with her. She's so funny. She's so funny. Some people, you know, some girlfriends, they can take those type of topics, but she can't. That's a what. But yeah, so we're on our way to the house. So anyway, I will see you all in the next clip. Hey guys. I am on my way to my sister's house. So I'm going over there because one of, well, both of my sisters are, um, are over there, but my youngest sister wants me to do her makeup. They are going out tonight to a, uh, some, I think it's a country western club or bar. It's called the Whiskey Something. I, I, I'll put it on the screen. So anyway, they asked me if I wanted to go, but I already had a hot date with the misters. <laughs> so I'm not going to go with them. So yeah, I am sitting in traffic. It seems to be letting up a little bit. Um, it also looks like it may rain out here. And I'm looking at the traffic on the other side. It's going to be, I'm going to catch it coming back to yeah going to pass honey going to going to pass so uh, she also wanted me to bring my my boots i love cowboy boots well cowgirl boots and my favorite brand of boots are lucasi i love those uh that brand i love their style the quality the quality is really good um, I only have one pair of Lucases, and they're like a chocolate brown color and a teal color. Uh, my husband bought me those some years back. But the pair, the two pair that I'm going to take them to see if you know they want to wear, I have a pair of red corral boots and a pair of gray boots that have the fringes. I forgot the name. The name is escaping me right now. I put it on the screen. So I'm going to take those, do the makeup, and then I'm going to scurry on back home. It takes about 30 minutes to get to her house from mine. She actually lives in another city. You know, I, you know how Houston has is made up of a lot of little, a lot of smaller cities put together, like Missouri City. There's um, Rosenberg. There's um, Katy. Um, there's also what is it, Kingwood? Is it Kingwood or Woodlands? From my understanding, one of those is like a part of it. So. Um, that's, that's how Houston is so big, you know, because it's got all of these smaller cities that are kind of lumped together, you know, but at least that's my understanding of it. Um, same with Dallas. You know how Dallas, you, you have, and for those of you all who live in Dallas, if I'm, if I'm incorrect, like you have Dallas, Fort Worth, um, uh, Oh my goodness, I can't think of the other one. Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, the name is escaping me. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> but anyway, it's kind of like all in the same area with Dallas being the, the main city. But anyway, yeah, so I'm just trying to get there safely and making sure nobody comes over on me you know when you're driving a little car a small car especially with the low profile people tend to run you over out here in Houston in Houston 
I miss driving my expedition. My daughter has that truck and she loves it because <laughs> I think she's like her mama. I think she likes to run people over, you know. It's hard to be bullied when you're in a larger vehicle. But when you're smaller, when you're sitting low to the ground and in a smaller vehicle, people, oh, I didn't even see you there. Oh, you were there, I didn't even see you. And God forbid they get upset with you. The road rage and they're driving a bigger car. Oh, they will run over you out here in these streets. But anyway, um, have you all heard about the monkeypox? that's going around. Um, supposedly there's a couple of cases here in Houston and it's supposed to be a virus that's transmitted from animal to human. And the, the symptoms are, you know, when you initially get it, the, the, symptoms, the symptoms are similar to that of like the flu, you know, it seems like everything always starts off like the flu, just about. <laughs> so anyway, you start off with the flu, and then after that, you uh, you develop these bumps, and it kind of reminds when you see if you were to look it up and see a picture of it, it will it would remind you of the chicken pox. Has anybody um, have been have any of you all ever had the chicken pox? Well, I had the chicken pox. Uh, me and my sisters have had that, and that was no fun. Woo! That was not, uh uh that was not any fun. Anyway, it reminds you of that. So you get these bumps, they turn into blisters, and then they just kind of crust over. And, oof, it looks, like, it looks like chicken pox almost, but it seems like, or it appears to be a, um, a more severe version of it. So, you all be careful out there in those streets. And supposedly, you know, the people at the CDC and, you know, all of the uh, doctors and things like that, they uh, seem to think that it's not going to be as bad as the Rona. You know, they're still concerned about that, but it's not. Maybe I should just get over because clearly I'm going to slowly. These cheerers out here on the street and these old folks move over in slow lane. So anyway, it's just another thing to be concerned about, or to be worried about, rather, or to be careful about. But we all should be careful anyway. So, yeah. When I get back home, I'm hoping that it doesn't rain. And if it doesn't, I will be able to uh, go out because I'm not going to, th I am supposed to be going out, but I'm not going to want to go out in the rain. Who wants to go out on a date in the rain? That's no fun at all. Especially if you go to a restaurant and you like to sit outside. If you're like one of those folks who like to sit outside. I'm not. But I'm just saying, if you were the type of person. And the only reason that I don't do that is because I sweat so easily. I could look at the sun and immediately just be drenched with sweat. It's crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bump my little music until... I get there and right now I'm passing a prison <laughs> it's so funny you see the, uh, the, the little signs along the way that says do not pick up hitchhikers uh, you think I don't even know if anybody does anybody still pick up hitchhikers but anyway you see the sign and you see the prisons it's funny you have these prisons on this side and then you got these big nice expensive homes on one side of the highway. <laughs> I don't know if I would want to live right across the way from a prison. I don't know. Would you? 
I mean, mind you, you know, they're locked up, but it's like right there. They can literally, if they escape, they can literally walk right over to your house. That's right there. <laughs> yeah, man. When this neighborhood was first, you know, when they were, uh, when they were, when they started building, I always thought nobody's going to want to live in a house that's right across the way from a prison. Huh? Boy, was I wrong. So anyway, if I go out tonight, I will bring you all along um, if it doesn't rain, okay? And I will have the Mr. Mister with me, okay? All right, so see y'all in the next clip. Hey, everybody. I am back with my honey bun, and we're going out to eat. And tonight we are going to Del Crisco's, but we're going to have dinner with my parents. So we're going to go to Mo City and pick them up. And then from there, we're going to study on to the Galleria because we're going to the Del Frisco's and the Galleria. And then after that, I don't know, maybe I'll take my parents riding or something. I don't know. But after that, my parents are... I know they're going to be really tired, so we're going to take them back home, and then uh, we'll come on back to the house. But um, I don't know if you all saw my previous vlog um, where I was talking about what Netflix and chill meant, and most people in the comments said that they didn't know what it meant. Um, so I was telling my husband about it, and of course, he thinks that he's so familiar and so hip to all of the slang and you know he's so smart and he's so this is this traffic sure does look like it doesn't it okay so anyway you know he thinks that he's just so smart and this so I decided to pull up some common slang words okay and it's a little site saying um you know where it talks about these common sl slang words that your teens use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call them out to him. I have it. Is he coming over with us? My goodness. Oh my God. I'm gonna call him out to him and see if he knows what they are. So let me put on the readers. Okay, so the first one is dope. What do you think dope means? D-O-P-E. Mm, great. Uh, okay, cool or awesome. Yeah, okay. Know that. Did you know that one? <laughs> okay. Can you, you just co just cooperate? Okay. Just can you just cooperate? Yeah, okay, that, that's okay listen, one. just that's okay. And then you see how he is? He he did he just just full of himself. Anyway, what about goat? Yeah, that's the greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Did okay. You know that yeah, because of Eli. <laughs> Because I heard Eli, <laughs> Eli told me, because uh, that's his channel name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Goat. No, it's like, what is Goat? It's our greatest of all time. Okay. Or it may have been Bryce that told me that. Either Eli or Bryce. Okay. What about Gucci? What does Gucci mean? Uh, either good. Yeah. Good. Good. Cool. Okay. What about Lit? Same thing. Same thing. Amazing, cool, exciting. What about OMG? Yeah, but, yeah. Huh? That's over. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, these are kind of easy. I even know what these mean. What about? Okay. What about snatched? Look good. Yeah. Okay. What about fire? Same thing. It means hot, trendy, amazing, on point. Okay. What about TBH? T B H T is a boy. Uh, T is a Tom. B is a boy. H is an honest. Yeah, I don't know that. What? To be honest. I ain't never heard that. And I gave you the answer. I said H is an honest. <laughs> okay. What about thirsty? Yeah, I, don't know. So, I guess when you, I guess that's doing. Not date, you're a date, you when you're after somebody and they don't want you. Yeah, uh -huh. trying to get somebody's attention. What about uh, your low? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. only live once. Yeah. 
Okay, what about um, what about Cap? Uh, I was gonna use it in a sentence, but oh my God, are you serious? Okay. All right. All right. So anyway, so you you don't you give up on that one, Cap? I mean, um, oh, flat tire? No. Okay. All right, what about cap? Yeah. Uh, he can't be. I know it. All right. Huh? I know Take it. a guess. I don't know. I just uh, think it's better than somebody. Uh, it means fake or a lie. Okay, okay. Okay. What about curve? Curve? Uh -huh. it means to reject someone romantically. Oh, okay. What about emo? No. It's emo. It's like a drama queen. Uh, okay. What about fam? Fam. Fam. Yeah. Fam. Uh -huh. Fam. Okay. What about flex? You was just flexing when, when we got in the car when we he started talking about that. What does flex mean? <laughs> Show off. Okay. Show off. What about a Karen? Like if somebody calls somebody a Karen. Like Karen over there. I know, I know what a Karen is. Oh, you do? Yeah. Why you know what that means? A Karen? I yeah. Tell somebody word of shit out you about nothing. But mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what this has is a disparaging way to describe a petty middle-aged woman who is rude, especially to people who work in the service industry. For example, saying what a Karen about someone who returns their drink at a restaurant for not having enough ice. Okay. All right. Um, what about period? Period. Periods. That's the that's the slang word. Periods. Uh, end of a statement emphasizer. Uh, for example, the best. That's the best ice cream. Period. Period. Um. What about shook? To be incredibly shocked. Or shaken up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about throwing shade? To throw shade. Embarrassing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, I'm doing one more. Um, tight. What's that? Say what? Tight. Tight. Yes, uh, when you when you. I guess dress wise, when you clean and shaved up, uh, makeup on. Well, yeah, it's interesting because in here, this says in a close relationship or a friendship, but tight also means together, like what you just said. Yeah. Like I've heard yeah. people say, oh my God, is he coming over on it? Like people say, oh, that's tight. Yeah. Well, you know, that's tight. So I wonder, or maybe that's probably an old, older word since uh -huh, to say tight. Um, you know what smash means? Yeah. Kickback? You know what kickback is? Um, a kickback is a small party. I never heard of that. Kickback. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it just goes on and on. They got all kind of words. All kind of stuff. But anyway, y'all. We're almost there. We will see you all in the next clip. Hey guys, how are you all doing? I am at it again with my little chat and fold. Uh, I don't have tiles now. This time I have my clothes and my husband's clothes. So this gives me an opportunity to talk to you all and catch up on what's going on. Speaking of which, <laughs> catching up and talking about what's going on. 
Uh, have you all heard about, um, are you all familiar with Nick Cannon? For those of you all who know who that is, um, have you all heard that uh, now he's uh, welcoming or he, you know, he announced that Oh, it's an ice machine to my refrigerator. I don't know if you all heard that. But anyway, he just announced that he is working on his 10th child. So you all know that people just have a lot to say about that, right? Including me. You know, I have a lot to say about it. Well, I don't, I don't so much have a lot to say. Do you all hear the thunder? My house is literally vibrating. Do y'all hear that? That's kind of scary. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> so Nick Cannon is working on his 10th child, all right? He just announced it. And of course, people have a lot to say about it. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. And from my understanding, he just, some lady just had his baby probably, what, a couple weeks ago? <laughs> And, you know, I was talking to my husband about it and I was like, he's just, you know, excuse what I'm about to say, but I'm like, he's just raw dogging it, you know, like just, you know, doing it with everybody. But uh, my husband was telling me that he wants a lot of children. So this is like all of this, all of these kids are not by accident. This is like what he wants. So, um, you know, which if that's what he wants, that's that's all good and fine. You know, good children are a blessing and, you know, he can afford them. So more power to him. Um, there was an interview by the lady that had his last child. I want to say his ninth child. I can't I can't keep up with these women. Uh, but um, she was saying that, oh, he's a good father. And, you know, anytime we need him. You know, if he has to catch a plane or whatever, he's right there. And <laughs> she was saying that his assistant is like, she's really on it. And you know, I just gotta ask you all. Okay, so I know that the majority of the ladies that watch me are, you know, I think in your thirties and upwards of my age. Okay, so I just gotta ask. All right, so, Let's take away, you know, the idea that, you know, Nick Cannon, he's wealthy, okay? He could afford a zillion kids, I guess, if he wants to, if he can afford it. But if you take the financial aspect away from it, do you feel that he is a good father, okay? So, you know, when I think of and I'm not passing judgment, I'm just going to make a statement. Of course, you all can tell me what you think. But when I think of a good father, okay, I'm gonna think about my dad. All right, so my dad was there when I woke up, you know, he was there, you know, when I, uh, you know, went to bed at night, there to help me with homework. Uh, we all went to church together. You know, when it was time to go to Big Mom and Big Daddy's house and Grandma, you know, we traveled together, et cetera, et cetera. You know, my dad was there. Plus, of course, he took care of the family. You know, it, even to this day, my father is still there and he still does stuff like take me out. You know, he took, <laughs> he took me and uh, my husband out a couple of times this week already. One was for my birthday. I'm going to be 51 on the 1st of September. But anyway, those are the things that I think of, of a good father. So if you have someone who has to spread all of that out, you know, waking up with your child, um, you know, being there when they do their homework, going to church, if you go to church, et cetera, et cetera. If you can't do, if you cannot do all that, you know, because there's only so much spreading yourself around that you can do. Are you considered a good father? Because, you know, of course, some people are debating that and some people are saying he needs to, you know, he's just doing too much. He needs to stop. But I'm like, well, if he can afford it, you know, a bare minimum. Oh, excuse me. Bare minimum, if you can afford your kids, you know, if you're not 
asking for assistance to take care of the children that you're making, you know, by all means, but I don't know. I think that's just food, food for thought, because if you, I just don't see how he can spread himself around that many times every day, each day. A child, you know, they need the love from their parents. You know, they, they need the love from both of their parents, love and care and all that other stuff. So I was just wondering, I'd love to know what you all think. To me, I'm not gonna say he's a bad father. I'm not gonna say that at all. I just wonder how does he do that? You know, how does he manage that? Or is that, or is that uh, simply left up to the nannies or the housekeepers or, the tutors or, or whatever, you know, mind you, yeah, he can fly in whenever there's a, a softball game or a play or something like that. Yeah, he could fly in town if he's not in town or, or whatever, but can he do it each and every night for each child equally? I just feel like something might be missing a little bit. Let me know what you think about that. Another thing about Nick Cannon that <laughs> I saw uh, he made a comment about uh, females, women, and he was saying that I think the percentage was like 80 percent. And he was saying that 80 percent of women stink between their legs, like the, the odor is so bad it could clear out a room. Now, mind you, first off, who are you messing with, Nick Cannon? First of all, who are the people that you picking up? Okay. Second of all, why would you admit that? You know, it's just some things, it's some things I don't know that I would just tell anybody. To me, if you, to me, if you picking up, if 80% of the woman that, of the women that you are entertaining, if they smell, that's a reflection on you, homeboy. I mean, it just kind of makes me think, Nick, who are you talking about? And it just seems like he was he was saying that to degrade women, I thought. So, you know, after he made that statement, that just kind of that kind of makes me look at him in a in a different light, so to speak. I don't like it when um and he could not have been trying to bash women, but I think that I think that in a way he was trying to do that. And I'm like, "Who?" <laughs> Well, who are you? Who are you messing with, homeboy? For trying to trying to degrade folks. I think that's what he was doing. He was trying to low key throw some shade. Well, there ain't no low key on that one. It was some high key. He was trying to throw some shade. Um, I have this app on my phone, and it's called uh, Newsweek. And it's always telling me who died in Houston, who got shot, who got mugged, whose house burned down, what police officer did this. I mean, anything negative in Houston you can think of, okay, it's going to pop up on this app. And it's always, it's always like, uh, you know, dinging, like to show me all the things that's happening. So. You know, yeah, I know that there's a lot of murder shootings, you know, kidnappings, all of that, fires, all of that. I know all of that is in Houston, but I saw one uh, today, and it just kind of made me think about, it was talking about a teacher, and uh, it was saying how she took to social media to express her, her feelings about people's thoughts about her attire, you know, about what she wears to school to teach in. So just to kind of give you an idea of what she looks like, you all have seen the women that get the BBLs and, you know, breast augmentated. So they have all that stuff going on on the back and they have it all going here. So, you know, when it, when I looked at the outfits, like one of them, she had a skirt on and a, and a blouse. Okay. So, it looked fine to me, but because of her body, because of her body, it looked like it was a bit much, but nothing was revealing. But I kept looking and I saw one picture where 
she had tights on have you all seen those tights where like in the back of the tights where the where your booty cheeks uh like connect in the middle it has that seam uh, going up the side so it makes your butt look even more pronounced it looked like she had on that and like a really tight shirt i think that was a bit much but um I think that people probably, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen what people wear to like my son's high school and people wear a little bit of everything, you know? So I feel like as long as her boobs aren't hanging out and stuff isn't hanging out, what, what can you do? What? She, she, she just has that kind of shape. What do you all think? Do you all think that teachers should dress conservatively? You know, by her having a big butt, she has a really, this lady that I'm talking about has a really, really, really big butt, a very, very tiny waist and very big boobs. So I feel like no matter what she wears, it's gonna look some kind of way because She's so shapely. It looks like her body was probably augmented, you know, because it was the classic signs of the big butt and then the, the, the legs that go straight down. You know how, uh, well, typically the ones that I've seen, the people that have the BBLs, it doesn't go like smoothly. There's, there's like an apparent or a contrast when it comes to where the legs, you know, come down. But anyway, and it looked like the teacher, excuse me, the, um, the school was an elementary school, so it was kids. It wasn't like a high school or anything like that. And they were also giving her the blues because on her Instagram, she had, now on her Instagram, she had revealing things. Now, now that's one thing that I don't agree with. You know, I think that stuff like that should be separate from, you know, school or work related, especially if you're going to have revealing attire, you know, I don't know. Do you think I'm old fashioned for thinking about thinking that way? I think that that should just be, you know, left separate. And like when you looked at the comments, <laughs> it was so funny because the women were like, oh, no, that's too, uh, you know, it's too much. She shouldn't be dressing like that. And then the men, you could tell they were men. They was like, well, you know, I like it, but it probably is a little bit too much for school. <laughs> but yeah, so, and you know, another thing, if she's wearing the, uh, that to work, evidently she must be within the dress code because I know that teachers have a dress code. They can't just well, I know for a fact there is a dress code. Now, if the principal enforces it or not, that's another thing. Who knows? Nobody knows if the principal is actually enforcing that. But, you know, I don't know. Everybody got an opinion on everything, including me. <laughs> but I do try to be neutral, you know, when I'm, you know, kind of, talking about my opinion. I try to be try to be neutral for the most part of it and not come across as so judgmental. I don't like it. Um, I don't like coming across people who are judgmental. I, I don't, that's a big turn off. In fact, if you all ever, you know, hear me coming across as judgmental, like casting judge, uh, like judgment out on other people, you know, call me to the carpet, say, hey, Brit what is that? Hearing stuff in my house. I'm here by myself. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I just heard something. I know it's about to rain outside, but yeah, if you ever hear me casting judgment, say, hey, look, you know, call me to the carpet on it. I don't like that. Yeah, that's all I wanted to talk to you all about. I'm pretty much finished folding my clothes and this is pretty much going to be the vlog. Um, I'm not sure when I will upload again. Hopefully before the week is up. I'm not sure. Hopefully we'll see. So anyway, this pretty much concludes the end of my vlog.
Thanks so much for returning and tuning in to watch me. And until my next video, smooches.